Uh, we asked the question, how can we determine whether a patient's a person's spirituality is helping that person or hurting that person? And this led us into the area of spiritual assessment. How can we assess a person's spirituality? You are learning how in the course of your PA program to assess a person's function, to assess a person's uh, cognition, mentation. Um, I hope you've also learned some things about assessing a person's spirituality so that you can determine, first of all, what the person's doing with their native spirituality. Are they practicing it in healthy ways, in ways that will promote health? Um, and we looked at several ways of doing that. The one that seems to be um, easiest to use and most common in the healthcare profession is called FICA, F-I-C-A, in which uh, the patient's spirituality is assessed according to that rubric. What are the dimensions of suffering? In what ways do people who are suffering suffer? Well, we first of all pointed out that people don't have to be seriously sick in order to suffer. They don't have to be terminally sick in order to suffer. They simply have to recognize that they are mortal human beings in order to experience suffering, and illness does that very well. The dimensions of suffering are multidimensional. They are all the dimensions of the human being, so that there are physical dimensions, that is to say pain, discomfort, malaise, but also psychological dimensions, such as to say anxiety and worry, depression, bitterness, rage, fear. There are social dimensions, that is to say, people feel cut off, alienated from their friends and from their family. And there are certainly spiritual dimensions. What is the meaning of my suffering? Why is God doing this to me? Where is God when I'm suffering? Why do people suffer? Why do I suffer? Why, does the world, why is the world full of suffering? What is the connection between spirituality and meaning? How does meaning affect health? Well, we looked at some stuff that indicates that uh, meaning or the lack of meaning profoundly affects health. That, in fact, when people lose all meaning in their lives, that they usually die rather quickly. Spirituality, that part of the human being that searches for meaning and that makes meaning out of all the various circumstances of life, is that part of the human being that's most profoundly engaged in all of this work. And as healthcare professionals, it's possible to help people with their search for the meaning of their illness, of their suffering. We asked the question, are there other ways of looking at medicine and healing other than the usual pathogenic model, which attempts to identify what made this person sick and deal with it or remove it if possible? Um, and we looked at the possibilities of a salutogenic model and asking the question, what kinds of things promote health and how can we strengthen those things? And notice that there are a number of things that do in fact help person to, people to be healthy. I mean, good diet, exercise, good health practices, those are some things. But also faith-based optimism is another thing. Social engagement is another thing. Positive emotions is another thing and so on. What does positive psychology teach us about caring for patients? We all know a little bit about the negative part of psychology, that is to say abnormal psychology, the psychology of dysfunction and disease. But what about positive psychology? Things like self-esteem and optimism and positive thinking and positive emotions and relationships. Um, what does that teach us about caring for patients? And we looked at some of the research that has been done by people like Martin Seligman under that heading, the heading of positive psychology. What are the characteristics, according to positive psychology, of things like flourishing and competency and resiliency, and what do they have to do with health care? We looked at much of that and noticed uh, what some of those words mean and how flourishing can happen even in the midst of sickness, even terminal illness, how there are people who are more competent than others, to deal with life and its troubles, and people who are more resilient than others. That is to say, when difficult things happen, they bounce back with a greater degree of resiliency. Can a person be healed without being cured? Um, I think you already know the answer to that question, that healing and curing are two different things, and that it is possible for a person to experience serious illness and even to die as a result of that serious illness, and yet to experience a measure of healing greater than anything that that person knew when they were well. What does it mean for you and me to be spiritual? 
we said, you know, it's really hard to help somebody go somewhere that we've never been ourselves. It's really hard to have a conversation with someone about spirituality if we don't know much of anything about spirituality. This is a Christian college. This is a Christian physician assistant program. And this is a physician, a Christian healthcare institution. And so what we really ought to be able to do is to explore the dimensions of Christian spirituality and figure out how we ourselves can be more spiritual and um, how Christianity can help us to be more spiritual and how then in turn we can help other people. We ask the question, can spirituality help me to live the life I've always wanted? And um, largely by reading Ortberg's book, looked at how we can find a deeper level of spirituality and what Jesus of Nazareth has to say to us about spirituality and about life. How does spirituality and religion inform palliative care? In other words, how do we care for those when we don't hope any longer to be able to cure them? How do we care for them in the closing stages of their lives? And what are the spiritual dimensions of death and dying? This is something that happens to all of us and we want to be uh, understanding and helpful for people as they walk this journey just like we would hope that people would be understanding and helpful for us as we walk the journey that all of us are someday going to walk.